The notion that nuclear power is emissions free is probably true if one of the emissions is truth. Truth isn't being emitted when that is being said. Nuclear power plants routinely release radioactivity to the environment, to the air and to the water. They also generate high-level nuclear waste that nobody knows what to do with. It's stacking up at these nuclear power plants. In addition, the biggest emission that nuclear power plants have is thermal pollution. Nuclear power plants are 33% efficient. A 1,000 megawatt nuclear power plant releases 2,000 megawatts of thermal pollution. That's why all these nuclear power plants are on oceans, lakes, or rivers, is that they need an awful lot of water to take away that waste heat. The Culvert Cliffs plant will take in two million gallons of bay water a minute for cooling, and the output will raise bay temperatures an average of three degrees over a 35-acre area. Power company scientists predict no harmful effects, but others claim the heated water will cause premature spawning by migratory fish, destroy microorganisms, and dangerously promote the growth of algae. The Clean Water Act, the federal statute that, that applies to water quality standards throughout the nation, um, clearly applies to thermal pollution. So the scientists and the EPA and the law clearly recognizes heated discharge as a pollutant that can very severely affect the environment. But in fact, the EPA, which is the federal agency that implements the Clean Water Act, has not actually seen that as a high priority. You know, you see these plants, they're sitting there and they look um, you know, they look relatively innocuous. They don't have the big smokestacks. They don't, you can't see what's going on in the water. But in fact, when the public doesn't see, you know, smoke spewing out of a stack, it's, it, it, they may not be that engaged. There will be no smoke from Culvert Cliffs, but its thermal threat is viewed differently by the Atomic Energy Commission and some ecologists. It was thermal pollution that was the first reason why environmentalists turned against nuclear power. Back in the 60s, a Sports Illustrated ran an article about how thermal pollution from nuclear power plants would kill sport fishing, fly fishing and whatnot. And that got an awful lot of fishermen mad. We still haven't solved that thermal pollution, that thermal emissions problem. It's worse at nuclear power plants than from any other energy source. You'll hear two types of, uh, of impacts talked about. One is entrainment, and that is every, everything at the microscopic level that gets pulled in is all destroyed, killed, basically 100% mortality is assumed for all of these plants. A typical nuclear plant, I think, is a, a, a couple billion gallons a day. And then the other is impingement, and that is animals killed, species killed against the screens. So they do put these screens on the intake system to try to keep big animals from pulling in. And these are big pipes from pulling into the system. And so you have impacts on the microscopic level, impacts on the larger species. Those are taking biomass out of the ecosystem and destroying it. Basically, that's an intake impact in, in the cold water. Then you've got on the other end the thermal water, the thermally heated water, um, discharged out into the environment at 10, 20, 30 degrees above the existing temperature of the water body into which it's discharged. And those, that, that discharge of heated water can also have wreak um, havoc on the species and the environment that's there because it's obviously changing the, the water temperature and the chemical and physical dynamics of the water system. When the steam leaves the turbines, it's turned back to water in a special heat exchanger called the condenser. The condenser has thousands of little pipes just like this one. Each pipe is filled with cool water from the Columbia River. When the hot steam touches the cool pipe, it condenses back to water. There's an issue, especially for plants that are located on inland waterways, where um, you're seeing uh, you're seeing the the whole phenomenon of global warming warm up the entire environment, including the incoming water. And so, so it's an interesting idea that, in fact, you, these plants may become less effective and less efficient and less reliable. We're certainly seeing temperatures rise, problems with fish populations there, and um, potential uh, unreliability of the cooling water systems. Look what happened to France a couple of years ago when it was so hot. They had to stop running the nuclear power stations because there wasn't enough water in the rivers and what little was left was so hot that they couldn't cool the reactors with it. It is a very, very tricky resource and we have to be cognizant of the impact, which is the whole footprint 
from extracting the resource, from keeping that fuel going, versus wind that's going to be there and there's no pipeline for fuel that you have to be worried about or impact on the environment that you're going to have to such an extent, or solar, which is probably the friendliest energy of all. You can have a solar panel powering your home, powering your car, powering all of your tools. You can have it on your watch. You can have it on your kid's backpack. It's so easy to install. Your wife can install it. Your dog can chew on the wires. You can lift it. You can move it. You can power a village in Africa in two days and bring them to the 20th century with education, computers, and healthcare, with doctors across borders and video cameras. And we're sitting here pondering on how to build nuclear power plants that takes decades, and then you have to build the wire and the infrastructure. Meanwhile, two billion people there in the Sun Belt are sitting with no energy and getting poorer and poorer every day. What are we thinking? And, and who is driving this energy process?